lights, camera, action. Okay. Welcome. Let's do another episode, a long overdue episode of Talking Zafoon. And uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about how do you make a sound on this thing, and how do you make a good sound, and how do we support our sound from uh, low note all the way up to the high note and be comfortable with our playing. So, I'm going to assume you know nothing, you're a brand new player, you've never played a reed instrument, so the most important thing to know is this is the most important thing that we use to make the sound. And uh, originally all the reed instruments used cane reeds made from natural wood materials. Uh, nowadays we have synthetic reeds, which I personally prefer. Uh, they are made out of materials that uh, okay, are synthetic and uh, they have some advantages over the uh, wooden ones. Uh, whatever reed you use though, some you need to know they vary in quality as well as in type. Uh, it's very possible to get a bad reed that's not very responsive, so you do need a reed that's responsive. Usually you get one with your Zafoon. If you get a brand new Zafoon, it's around a two and a half. They're usually fairly good. Um, the synthetic ones last longer. The uh, cane ones require moistening before you play them. If you try to play them dry, uh, they aren't very responsive. So we often take do that and taste that nice sweet taste of the fresh wood to moisten it up and then we put it on our zafoon uh, or you can some people like to soak them in water uh, so key thing to know then is it's got to fit on here and I did have the reed pulled aside here and we try to get the light okay what I'm trying to show you is that yeah there we go there's a a lip it's a fairly thick lip around there the reed needs to be centered in that not all the way to the end of the instrument but with some showing and centered on both sides because this reed has to vibrate and it opens and closes that hole as we force the air through so uh, this one's all positioned ready to go um, so this is a Hartman carbon fiber reed and uh, my favorite read. Uh, what we need to do, okay, we need to, there's a space here, we need to force air through it. Now, by say force, because it, it, if we just try to do it loosely, like pretty much get nothing. Lips have to seal on the sides. And um, also, that's not enough because in addition to that, we have to put some pressure on the reed. The um, point where our lower, so to do that, we need to take our lower lip, put it over our teeth, and then with our upper teeth, bite on the top part of the mouthpiece. And um, we want as much of this reed to vibrate as possible, so we keep our lower lip not up here, but more down toward the, closer to the ligature. Not, if we go too far, it will run into problems too. So we do the maximum amount that we can do and still put enough pressure to get the sound out of the reed. And uh, an important thing to know is the low note on the Zafoon with all the holes covered. And this is a C Maui Zafoon. So the low note is a C. And it vibrates at 262 hertz 262 times a second which sounds fast that's relatively slow it gives a fair amount of play to the reed when it vibrates so that's one reason you don't need as much pressure on it the higher up you go in your sound also another thing I want to tell you before we do that when you play when you start the tone you hit we hit the reed about here with our tongue that's called a tongue attack. That helps the reed to begin its vibration and as a beginner that's a good thing to do. Um, we do have non-tongue attacks 
and those are useful too, but uh, generally phrases, a phrase of music will generally start with an attack like that, with a tongue attack, and uh, so we do that, but when we go up an octave, the vibration doubles for every octave. So we go from 262 to 525, pretty roughly. And uh, that means we have to be putting just a little bit more pressure because the vibration is faster. It doesn't go quite as far, so it needs to be a little bit closer to, the, uh, to here. So the higher we go, the more pressure on our lip. And then it, from there, That's another octave up. That's um, the high C, and that vibrates at 1,000. Uh, uh, it's about 1,050 then. Uh, so that I don't recommend for a beginner. It does take pressure. It took me a while to get uh, up there. So get comfortable playing in the low range where you don't need as much pressure. You need the time for your uh, muscles around your lips and your cheeks here to condition to get so they can hold that seal because normally after about five minutes of playing or so instead of playing a nice clean tone you'll get starts coming out the sides your lips feel kind of blubbery and achy and funny feeling that's a good thing that means they're strengthening uh, so you need to condition those lips and once you get them in condition you got to keep them in condition because unlike the guitar where you get calluses on your fingers and they stay forever it seems like uh, muscle strength if the muscles aren't used you, you use them or lose them you know so if you don't keep practicing on a regular basis they'll soften up and uh, you'll have to build that back up again over time so uh, Keep at it and with a nice firm lip and nice and now an embouchure we want to talk more about that so because the lip that that affects the angle of the zaffoon in our mouth so when that angle changes or when our embouchure changes the pitch will also change so this is a C but if we go it drops, drops down below the C. We can also do things like that just uh, without changing the angle, but just moving our mouth different and moving our tongue different. We can go. So we can kind of sharpen it by pulling it up and tightening it up a little. But the more tightened up, the more you get to the end, the more pinched off your sound is. So try to get a nice full sound. We want to have a relaxed embouchure once we get it. And we want to keep that embouchure steady. This is something people a lot of times will uh, play the wrong note on the zaffoon with the right fingering or vice versa because there's so much fluctuation in the uh, possible with this short instrument. So unless you know what you're doing, you want to be in control of the tone. So for starters, get the pitch close and uh, keep a, the same embouchure all the way through, only adding the pressure you need to keep the, to support the sound. So what? So what we need to do then is when we get our sound, uh, let's see. I wanted you to try something too. If you're just starting out, you've never made a sound on this before. Once you get learn how to tighten up, if you tighten up too much, here's what happens. So if you're tightening it up so much that that that, that it closes the reed to the mouth, obviously no air is going to go through. So just it has to be a light touch, just enough 
that you have a steady tone. But when you get that pressure, the trick is to hold it steady. And because uh, if, it, if it fluctuates, you'll get a vibrato. You might want a vibrato. You learn to do that. But for mastering the instrument, for starters, learn a nice, steady, even tone. Then the most important thing at this point is to learn how to know how to breathe properly. So breathing, put your hands down, put your hands down here on your stomach and breathe in and feel it expand. That's your diaphragm area. That's so important that you have to, you feel that tension, hold that tension and then use that. That's the muscle you're going to use to make the air come out. You want it just, and it's good to breathe in through your nose too when you're playing because if you are a mouth breather and you're holding your zaffoon, it, you know, it can, it throws your embouchure off and um, you can, by having a nice full lung of airs and uh, breathing from the diaphragm, you can play your tones longer and you can also play softer. You can you have more control. So reach down in there, breathe really deeply. If you meditate, it's a good good thing to just practice that and just fill your lungs up to the max and then blow out gently until all your air is expelled. Get the feeling of that so you can and then quickly be able to fill your lungs up so you're ready to play. Then you want to hold a steady pressure. Low to you should learn to play as softly as you can without the tone breaking. So like for instance. Just lose the sound you still got the reed vibrating keep it vibrating practice that and that will help you condition your embouchure a lot and your you'll teach you the right breathing technique so and then you'll have a fuller dynamic range if you can play softly then you can go <laughs> Uh, so that's about it. But now I want to talk to you a little about the upper register. Uh, so what happens in the upper register is uh, it starts vibrating at a different uh, frequency. Um, and one way to get the upper register when you're starting out, you can just lift up this finger. You can lift the thumb hole also, but kind of best to lift this one up if you're just at the low note and you'll notice to keep that tone going you feel more pressure on your lower lip uh, so yeah you get the if you play in the upper register your lips uh, will get somewhat sore after a while note in the fingering chart is a C which is just same fingering as your low G everything on the left hand covered that will produce a high C so and uh, that's a nice high note uh, if you lift the, the little finger that you can get up to a, you'll go up a whole step to a D if you really keep the tension on your uh, reed higher now 
with me. We're always we're at the limit. So it takes a lot of uh, steady pressure applied to the reed. And uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about fingering from there. But so, and then if we want to go even higher, you can go up from that. But once you get to the D, you can actually get a third register on the Zaffoon. And I just learned today from Brian's video, uh, Brian Whitman, the inventor of the Zaffoon, been making some lessons lately. Uh, so I was going from here <laughs> simply by covering all the holes again. And since uh, See, there are overtones, so that's like the third overtone. You start just by a lot of increasing the pressure and how we blow into this instrument. So uh, instead of covering them all, Brian says, lift up this finger. And so you go from the C this way to the E flat this way, and it's much actually much easier. So, uh, yeah. Now those notes, you might not be comfortable playing those notes. Um, they people might not be comfortable hearing those notes, frankly, especially if you're off pitch. So you really, before you do master those notes, you want to have good embouchure control, good breath control. That's what we that's what we work toward. And the way to get there again is just doing our basic long notes, soft notes, and practicing within our range limit, and then gradually extending our limit. Uh, so. I want to talk a little bit about the notes between C, the high C, and the F. These are all lower register notes, but they're the high end of it. So, those are very easy to play wrong. It, you can you go off pitch when you're up there. This is where you're playing like a triad arpeggios, like a C. Helps you stay in tune in your mind, in your ears, and when you hit that note, you want to be on pitch. So it's very easy to be off, a half step, a whole step, or sometimes more, uh, up in that re region of the Zaffoon. So practice getting those correct. Uh, and then to go to the upper register frequently we will lift this or if you can do it without it don't lift this just go from covers everything about it. Um, if you have any questions, put it in the comment section, uh, either here or in the Zaffoon Players group, where this will also be posted. And uh, uh, I do want to say one more thing. Hygiene is very important when you have a Zaffoon. When you play the Zaffoon, the inside instantly is coated with moisture from inside your body. And um, if you're like me, I don't know about other people, but my instruments will start dripping after um, a fairly short time. Uh, so that's gross. And we got to watch where our fluids fall. And we don't want to be spreading anything. Uh, so be conscious of that fact and keep your Zaffoon clean. When you're done, clean it out. The reed, the back of the reed will get uh, thick with stuff if you don't clean it. And 
ugly. You don't want to do that. Um, it'll affect your responsiveness of the reed and uh, it, it thickens up, it builds up gunk so it can't vibrate freely. So you'll get much better response if you have a clean reed, a clean zaffoon. And that's what I want to say for everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Keep a clean zaffoon and have a great day. Peace out.